to open up. Thy word, thy word is a lamp, is a lamp unto my feet, unto my feet, and a light, and a light unto my path, unto my path. I have sworn, I have sworn, and I will perform, and I will perform it. That I will keep thy righteous judgments. That I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted. I am afflicted very much. Very much. Quicken me, quicken me, O Lord, O Lord, according unto thy word. According to thy word. Except, except I beseech thee, I beseech thee, the free will offering, the free will offering of my mouth, of my mouth, O Lord, O Lord, and teach me, and teach me thy judgments, thy judgments, my soul, my soul is continually, is continually in my hand, in my hand, yet, 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 do I forget thy law, do I not forget thy law, the wicked, the wicked have laid. Have laid a snare on for me. A snare for me. Yet, yet, I erred not from thy precepts. I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies, thy testimonies have I taken. Have I taken as an heritage, as an heritage forever, forever. For they are, for they are the rejoicing, the rejoicing of my heart, of my heart. I have inclined, I have inclined my heart, my heart. To perform, <laughs> to perform thy statues, thy statues, away, 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 even unto the end, even, even unto the, the end. end. May the Lord have a hearing, doing, reading the, the, the word of God, and my will give you praise. Amen. 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 That's all right. You baby, like we blessed him. So again, happy Sabbath, and everyone, welcome to the Bible Church. May God, then I continue the series, a uh, new birth. Uh, this is obedience. And the obedient part two. Again, this is called obedience in the obedient part two. And we left off with how the Lord said it is better to obey than to sacrifice and to hearken. And not to do that is as rebellion as is as sin and witchcraft. And the Lord said that for a reason. Because obedience to God's word and obedience to the creator is a stabilizer. I'll give you a perfect example. What is the most friendly house kept pet amongst men? You ever heard of an uh, obedient cat? You ever seen a police cat? You ever seen a, a blind cat, a cat leading blind people around? No. You have seen dogs, pets, that because of their obedience, they are cherished. In so much their obedience, they are used to save what? Lives. Mm -hmm. They're used to rescue people. We even trust them because they're so obedient to lead around blind people. Mm. That's how powerful obedience is. And a pet that is not obedient in your house, how long does that pet that pet stay in your house. You get a dog, he constantly biting you. He peeing all over the place. Hmm? How long are you gonna keep that pet? How long is that dog gonna stay with you? Not that long. But an obedient pet is in your house. Well, that's how the Lord look at us when we are obedient to his word. But I'm showing you the destruction of disobedience and the power of obedience. Let's go to Romans. 5 and 19. Romans 5 and 19. Because of one man will cover what Adam did. Think about this. What Adam did in the beginning, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, affects us to this day. It's disobedience. Consider that. That's the reason why every last one of us know because of his disobedience, we're going to die. Because we all the children of Adam, and there's not anybody walking around here that's older than 100, I go 150 years old, because of disobedience. Because of disobedience is why we don't have longevity, y'all. So right here in Romans 5, Romans 5 and uh, verse uh 19, we're going to read this one verse. Very powerful, y'all. 
Very powerful. Read. 19. For as by one man's disobedience. That's many Adam. Were, because by one man's disobedience, what? Many were made sinners. That's why we all sinners, y'all, if we walk after the flesh. If we walk after the flesh. That's why. Because of one man's disobedience thousands and thousands of years ago. That's why nobody's walking around here older than I give you 125 years or where they at. Because of disobedience, y'all. Well, let's see what the flip side of that coin is. Go ahead. So by the obedience of one, so many be made righteous. Oh, and that's talking about Jesus. It says, so by the obedience of one, shall many be what made what? Righteous. So that's the opposite side. That's why we got to believe in the one that was obedient. And we can't walk after our flesh, which is that, which is after disobedience. So now, I'll show you what I mean. Let's go into uh, Romans, back up to Romans 2 and 5. Romans 2 and 5. Because after our deeds is how the Lord is going to reward us, y'all. Two, sorry, uh, Romans 2 and 6. Romans 2 and 6, we're going to start right there. Go ahead. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? God will render to every man. He said every man according to his deeds, y'all. And if your deeds don't include obedience, then you think about how powerful obedience is. You cherish a woman that's obedient to her husband, her husband love her. A man that's obedient on his job, he gets advancements. People that obey the rules and that are obedient, what we call them, law-abiding citizens. They go far. When you're obedient and you're loyal, because we went into the synonyms, uh, obedience means allegiance. It means observance. It means loyalty. It means devoted. It means uh, 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 consistency. It means fidelity. It means compliance when you are obedient. These attributes get you far in business, in life, personally, socially, economically. That's the power of obedience, y'all. That's why he says she went to every man according to his deeds. Go ahead. Verse 7. To them who by patient continuing and well doing seek for glory and honor and mortality and eternal life. No, she said who? He said to them who by patient continuous, that's why in the part of the series where I'm talking about what you have to add to your faith, that patience, he said, look, in patient continuous in well-doing, seek for what? Glory and honor and immortality, eternal life is what you got coming when you do that. Go ahead. But unto them that are continuous, Contentious. Contentious. Uh huh. And do not obey the truth. Stop. But to them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. Go ahead. But obey unrighteousness. See, it's what you're going to obey. You're going to either obey the truth or you're going to obey unrighteousness. That's what you got to decide what your obedience to, what your alliance is to, what you are submissive to, what your uh, uh, willingness to be about. That's why he said, to them that obey not the truth, but obey unrighteousness, what they got coming? Indignation? Go ahead. Indignation uh -huh. and wrath. Uh -huh. Tribulation and anguish uh -huh. upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also the Gentile. Now look, that's why evil things, bad things happen to people all around. You wonder, man, why God allow that to happen? Why did that horrible thing over there? Why did that, uh, whoa, man, why that's going over there like that? Why God allowed this and why God allowed that? Because we just read, because he said, look, to them that obey unrighteousness, what they get? Indignation and wrath and tribulation. You want why we got problems in our community? It's because of disobedience. People obey unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful obedience is. Your obedience to that which is unrighteous, you're going to reap indignation and wrath. Think about it. In a marriage, man, look, a woman that ain't obedient to her husband, watch what happened to 
She go, why he going around getting this other whip? Why he do what you don't pay attention to him, what he say? And then like a pet, you get a dog in your house and he crapping all over your house. you go, how long that dog will stay in your house? Mm. Not long. Get on your job and sit up there and start obeying what you think is right rather than what the boss said. I give you a week. You go in there and do what you want to do. Obedience is a stabilizer. It brings about a uh, 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 <clears throat> loyalty, like I read, and it brings about tractability, compliance. It brings accordance. It brings about orderliness. That's what obedience is, y'all. Mm -hmm. So tribulation and anguish upon every sort of man that doeth evil, because they obey unrighteousness. That's why you, as a babe, you want to obey the truth and to obey righteousness, such as love, kindness, patience, long suffering, gentleness, godliness. That's what we talked about in the adding what you need to add to your faith. You obey that. And the Lord will render to you, when we read up a little higher, uh, honor and glory, immortality, and eternal life. You got that coming. So now, let's go look at somebody that made a promise, y'all. That made a promise. Let's go to Genesis 26 and 1. Let's see somebody that got that honor and glory, y'all. Let's go to Genesis 26 and verse 1. We're going to pick this character, Abraham. He was so obedient that the Lord started calling him said, the God of Abraham... Isaac and Jacob. Mm -hmm. Because of his what? His obedience. That's how God recognized obedience, y'all. Yeah. Genesis 26 uh -huh. and verse 1. Watch this. Uh, because this is God talking to Isaac. Go ahead. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham uh -huh. and Isaac went unto Abimelech, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gia. Uh -huh. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Now no, see that, go not down into Egypt. There's several reasons why God don't want Israel to go down into Egypt, or his true believers to go down, but that's another lesson. He said, go not down to Egypt, go ahead. Dwell in the land, which I shall tell thee of. Uh -huh. Sojourn, sojourn, in this land, and I will be with thee, uh -huh. and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham my father. Now, notice he said, Tell Isaac, look, you go and sojourn in the land that I tell you, and and I will bless thee, for unto thee and to thy seed I will give all these countries, and I'll perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Go ahead. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now watch this. Watch why Isaac, his son, is getting this. Let's pay close attention to the very next verse. He is going to be making seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. He's going to give unto his seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. He's talking to Isaac. But watch this. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Wait a minute. Because of what Abraham did? His seed, his son was blessed after him? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. What else did Abraham do? And kept my charge. Yes, sir. My commandments. Yes, sir. My statutes. Yes, sir. And my law. That's what comes with the voice of God, y'all. His commandments, his charge. His statutes and his laws. And this is why Isaac was being blessed because Abraham was so obedient. Let's go into St. John. Uh, 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 no, rather, let's go into 2 Chronicles 20 and 7. 2 Chronicles 20 and 7. See what God called Abraham. Even though he was long dead. Long dead because of his obedience, y'all. Second Chronicles 20 
And instead of telling you what, disobedience is personal, it is powerful. You pay attention to that, you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. The Lord is going to provide for you because he recognized that obedience thing. But are you going to be obedient to unrighteousness? Or are you going to be obedient to righteousness? As a babe, you need to make sure it is righteousness. That's what this intent of this new birth series is for the newborn babe. But uh, 2 Chronicles 20, and we're going to read verse 7. Read. Art not thou our God? No, he said, Art not thou our God? Go ahead. Who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel uh -huh. and gave his it to the seed of Abraham my friend forever. Oh, because Abraham did all of that. He is God's friend for how long? Mm -hmm. Forever. Wow. That is powerful obedience, y'all, because he obeyed God's voice, kept his laws, his commandments, his statutes, and his charge. Called him his friend forever. That's why you want to walk in the spirit of obedience. When you see the chance, the opportunity to do something wicked, think of that obedience. It'll lock you down. You want to be God's friend forever like Abraham. So you get ready to look at that sin or you get ready to look at that foolishness. You think your, how precious your obedience is, how powerful your obedience is. And Abraham is so powerful that he is God's friend forever. Hmm. Let's go clean into uh Let's go to Isaiah 41 and 8. Isaiah 41 and 8. Isaiah 41. Look what he says. Mm -hmm. Read. But thou, Israel, are my servant. Know that. Go ahead. Jacob, whom I have chosen. Yes, sir. The seed of Abraham, my friend. Also, we supposed to be his friend. He said, the seed of Abraham, my friend. The seed, he said, uh, but that is whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Now let's go into uh, J J uh, James, the book of James 2 and 23. His obedience spread all the way across this book, y'all. 2 and 23. Actually, we're going to start at uh, verse 2 and 20 and go down. Verse 20? Yeah, James 2 and 20. Read. But wilt thou know, O they men, that faith without works is dead. We dealt with that in part two of what you need to add to your faith. You got to come get this work. Our faith without works is what? Dead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Yes, sir. What We saw his works. Because the Lord said he kept his commandments, his laws. and his, you got, That's the works of God. Them the works you got to get. You got to come get that work. Go ahead. When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Yes, sir. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works by works was made perfect? Yes, sir, because without works your faith is dead. So he telling you clearly in this case, it was concerning Isaac his son. Seest how thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was his faith made perfect or made complete. Because that's what completes your faith, y'all, your works. Go ahead. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said Abraham believed God and it was he was called the friend of God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness read that again oh, okay. and the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness uh -huh. and he was called the friend of God yes sir all the way to the New Testament God is going to find the obedience of Abraham y'all because he is free forever now look uh, 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 let's go into uh, uh, St. John 3 and 37. I'm sorry, 8 and 37. St. John 8 and 37. Now, Jesus 
came down and his biggest adversary was the religious sect of that day, of that time, y'all. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, quote unquote, what they would call denominations nowadays, or those that are in actual, what they call Judaism. They was actually God's, they were actually Jesus' adversary. And watch what he said about this. We're going to go to St. John, St. John 8, and start at verse 37. Now, this is Israel in particular. We're going to get right on the dime. This is Israel that he talked to that had been polluted in what we can call nowadays Judaism. They're standing there with their fringes on their phylacteries and all that, robes and all that, all them garbs. But look what he said to them. Go ahead. 37. Go ahead. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. So we know we're talking to Israel, physical Israel, y'all. That's supposed to be God's friend, y'all. He said, I know you are Abraham's seed. Go ahead. But seek to kill me. But you seek to kill me. Now, how is it that you Abraham's seed, but you seeking to kill the Lord? Go ahead. Because my word hath no place in you. Interesting. Because the word of the Lord was not in them. Go ahead. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Uh huh. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do this work. You would do the works of Abraham. Oh, so wait a minute. Even though they're standing there with all this outward appearance, because he tell you about that in Matthew twenty third chapter. That's another lesson. They weren't doing the works of Abraham. And how did God know that they were not doing the works of Abraham? Let's skip all the way down to uh, verse uh, 57. Because he told them, look. No, 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Because Jesus was there in the beginning. He the one that created the Sabbath day. So he said, look. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Go ahead. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? They're sitting up there not realizing the magnitude of who's standing in front of them. Right. Like we got a lot of Hebrew Israelites that's running around, don't understand who they're kicking against when they kick against Jesus. Really, I'm talking about the Jews of this Bible. They really don't understand that. So he said, they said, they're talking about, Art thou, uh, art thou not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Watch what Jesus said unto them. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Notice, who told Moses to tell the children of Israel to say, I sent you? I am. That's what Jesus said. Before Abraham was, he said, Verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. But because of Israel's disobedience, they couldn't even recognize this was God in the flesh. These religious sects, because they were being obedient unto unrighteousness, because they were following their own clique and they had their own agenda in mind. Now look, let's go to uh, 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 Nehemiah 9 and 7 and see what Jesus came and put, put down on, on Mount Sinai. Uh, Nehemiah 9 and 7. Nehemiah 9 and 7. But he said, before Abraham was, I am. But they want to obey unrighteousness. Near my nine and verse seven. Thou art the Lord, the God, who did as choose Abraham. That was Jesus, y'all. That's right there. He talking about Jesus. Thou art the Lord, Amen. the God, who did choose Abraham. He said, look, before Abraham was, I am. Go ahead. And brought us him forth out of your, of the, Ur of the Chaldees. Uh, Ur of the Chaldees. And gave him the name of Abraham. Jesus the one that did that, y'all. Changed his name from Abram to Abraham. Go ahead. And found his heart faithful before thee. Oh, and found his what? Heart. His heart faithful before thee. That's why he was telling the Pharisees, if you were to uh, see the Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. God, come get this work. But they want to stone the Lord. Come on, thou not 50 years old. How you seen Abraham? 
He told you, look, before Abraham told them, before Abraham was, I am. And he found Abraham heart faithful before him. Go ahead. And made a covenant with him to give the land of Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, and the Gerzites, to give it, I say, to his seed, and has performed thy word, for thou art righteous. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And we did see the affection of our fathers in Egypt, and heard it, thy cry, their cry by the Red Sea. Yes, sir. And shooters, signs, and wonders upon Pharaoh, and on all his servants, and on all the people of his land. For thou knewest that they dealt proudly against them. Yes, sir. But didn't thou get be a name as it is this day? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, and thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry land. Yes, sir. Persecuted, thou threw it into the deeps as stone into the mighty waters. Yes, sir. Moreover, thou ledest them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the in the night by a pillar of fire to give them light in ways wherein they should go. Uh huh. Thou, thou camest down also upon upon Mount Sinai. And spake us with them from heaven and gave us them right judgment. Yes, sir. And true law. Yes, sir. Good statutes. Yes, sir. And commandments. The same thing Abraham had to deal with, y'all. Straight up. Go ahead. And refuse to obey. No, verse 14. Oh, 14. Sorry. It matters not unto them. Thy holy Sabbath and commandments commanded is them pre precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses, thy servant. Then he say, Look. Abraham saw my day and rejoiced, and he saw it. That's why he gave it to Israel, because these, the Holy Sabbath is the Lord's day, y'all. But that's enough. We already dealt with that early on in this series. Go ahead. And gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought us forth water for them out of the rock, for their thirst, and promised them, promised them that they should go into the possessions of the land which thou hast sworn to give them. Uh huh. But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hearkened not to thy commandments mm. and refused to obey thee. Oh, whoa, whoa, they, and they refused to what? Obey. And they refused to obey. Go ahead. Neither were, mind, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them but hardened their necks in the rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. Uh -huh. But thou art a God ready to pardon the gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and forsook them not. So not look, they refused to obey, neither were they mindful of thy warnings that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in their what their rebellion, they appointed a captain to return to their bondage. So when you fall off into disobedience, you just took yourself right back in the bond. You put yourself in bondage. Mm. Straight up. He said, but thou art God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and for sick as them not. Go ahead. Yeah. When they have made them a molten cow and said, This is thy God that bought thee up upon out. Sorry. Yeah, when they had made them a molten cow and See, said, because they were being bondage, y'all. Now they start making their own gods, just like our people now, because of disobedience, we make up our own gods. We follow these strange gods like Christmas and going to church on Sunday. Talking about we going to heaven and all that stuff that come because they obey unrighteousness, y'all. So now they obey this unrighteousness and making themselves a molten calf. And they saying, this is thy God that brought thee up out of Egypt and have brought great provocation. Go ahead. And said, this is thy God that brought thee up out of Egypt and had brought great provocation. Mm -hmm. Yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness. Uh -huh. The pillar of the clouds departed not from them by day to lead them in the way. Neither the pillar of fire by night to shew them light and the way wherein they should go. Uh -huh. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them. Oh, so he gave them a good spirit to what? Instruct, instruct them. them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And will have not thy manner from their mouth and gavest them water for the thirst. Uh -huh. Yeah, 40 years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed, waxed old and their feet swelled not. Uh -huh. Moreover, thou gavest them kingdoms and nations 
and then and then divides them into corners for they possess the land of Sidon and the land of King Hashabaz and the land of of King of Bashan. Now look, skip down to verse. Even though the Lord did all these wonderful things for our forefathers, skip down to verse twenty six. Nevertheless, they were twenty six. Verse twenty six. Nevertheless. Yeah, nevertheless. Never, ne nevertheless. Nevertheless, they were disobedient. They were what? They were disobedient, y'all. Our forefathers were disobedient. Go ahead. And rebelled against thee. And they rebelled against God. Go ahead. And cast thy law behind their back. Look, you go and tell them churches tomorrow or Sunday and talk about the law. They never cast this. Look, we are children of our fathers, y'all. We cast the law behind our backs. Still doing that same thing. That's why we got the great mess we get. And tribulation that we get. And anguish that we get because we would be get we be our four, like our forefathers did. They rebelled against them. They cast the law behind their backs and go ahead. And slew what? And slew thy prophets. Yes, they did. Go which, ahead. Which testified against them to turn them to thee. And they wrought great provocation. Yes, sir. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them. In the time of their trouble. Now, no, see, therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who what? Vexed them. And we in the hand of our enemies that they vexed them. What you, why do you think we run around talking about Black Lives Matter? Because we're doing the same thing that our forefathers did. Therefore, we've been delivered into the hand of our enemies and they vexing us, y'all. Go ahead. And in the time of their trouble. Yes, sir. When they cried unto thee. Thou hardest them from heaven, uh -huh. and according to thy manifold mercy, thou givest them saviors. Oh, he said he gave us them what? Saviors. saviors. Go ahead. Who saved them out of the hands of their enemies. See, look. But, he gave us saviors to save us out of the hand of our enemies. Go ahead. But after they had rest. Now, look. Here go our people, y'all. Look. We ain't changed to this day. After they we done had rest. Go ahead. They did evil they again. They did evil again. That's what our forefathers did, y'all. They did evil again before them. Go ahead. Before thee. Therefore, that is, leftest thou them in the hands of their enemies, so that they had the, the dominion over them. Uh -huh. Yet when they returned and called over thee, unto thee, thou heard they heard, they, thou heardest them from heaven, and many times didst thou deliver them according to thy mercy. Look, to this day, y'all, but why are we in trouble in the first place? Because they were di uh, uh, disobedient and rebelled against God and cast his law behind their backs. So what brings us out of here? Being obedient, y'all. Let me go to Jeremiah right quick. Jeremiah 3 and 24 kind of sum this thing up right here in this part. Jeremiah 3 and 24. And then I'm going to walk you down straight up. Into what's going on right now, the everybody in the nation is aware of y'all. And we can't can't nobody sit up there and deny and say, oh man, so man made that book up. Okay. But we're going to Jeremiah 3, and we're going to be verse 24 and 25. Because this is what's definitely done happened to our people because of our disobedience, y'all. Go ahead. For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers. Our youth. Yes, sir. Shame has devoured the labels our fathers from their youth. Go ahead. Their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. Yes, sir. We lie down in our shame. Look, our people lie down in shame, y'all. Go ahead. And our confusion covered, covered us. Yes, it does. So we have sinned against the Lord, our God, we and our fathers from our youth, even unto this they have not obeyed the voice of the Lord of God. Now look, remember, Abraham obeyed God and became his was his friend forever. So all of this cover our people because we obeyed not the voice of our God. That's how powerful obedience and disobedience is, y'all. It's so much. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah, y'all. We're going to Isaiah 42 and 20. And then we're going to look at a strong, a powerful testimony of obedience, y'all. Another example of it. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. And uh, verse 
20, because he said Shane has covered us, y'all. Go ahead. Shane made things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he hears not. Uh huh. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Uh huh. But this is a this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. Wait a minute, we are hid in prison houses, y'all. Yes, Think about it. Right now in America, they're talking about how the criminal justice is, is biased. Against the report just came out against the Baltimore Police Department. It came out against the Missouri Police Department. We already know about LA, y'all. Even in Illinois, the Chicago Police Department had the release records showing how the mistreating of minorities has been going on for quite some time, y'all. But we are pray, and we are here in prison house. And they are what? And they are uh okay. they are for a prey uh -huh. and, and non deliberately. For a spoiled and not to say your story. Uh huh. Who among you will give ear to this? No, she said, Who among you will give ear to this? Go ahead. Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Look, who will hearken and hear for the time to come? We in this time right now. Amen. Right now. But we're going to understand why is it like this. So I'll show you how powerful disobedience is. Go ahead. And Israel to the robbers. Uh uh. And verse 24 to the time. Uh -oh. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? Uh -huh. And Israel to the robbers. Uh -huh. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned. Oh, you mean tell him we are Israel? That's who being here with the prison houses? The so-called Negro Afro-Americans and a whole host of other names other than being called Israel, the children of Jacob. He said, who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to buy? That's who being here with the prison houses? That's how we know this book is real, y'all. Because we in this time with Israel being hid away in prison houses. Go ahead. And why? He against whom we have sinned. Go ahead. Why? Why is this going on? Why is this great imprisonment of black people in the land of the home of the free and the land of the brave? This has to be the most prosperous nation to be in. But why is it housing more black people than any other nation on the planet? Go ahead. For they would not walk in his way, neither were they obedient unto his law. You mean to tell me all of that's because we're not obedient? Mm. Look at the magnitude of this thing, y'all. Pick a prison house. Pick a jail. Matter of fact, you be likely to be picked to be put in jail. Mm -hmm. Because of what? Disobedience, y'all. That's how powerful disobedience is. Because he said we would not be obedient unto his law. Pick a Sunday church and drop that law in there. I give you 20 minutes. I'll be waiting for you outside. And say, oh, I thought you were going to tell them about the law without getting kicked out. So I'll preach. Now let's look at a powerful example of an obedient servant. They got another example. Let's go to Daniel's third chapter. Daniel 3, and we're going to read starting at verse 1. Now here, we have a Gentile that's setting up an image to be worshipped. Okay? And we're going to bounce between here and the commandments of God. Okay? Read. Daniel 3 and verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three square cubits in the breeder the breath. Breath is thereof six cubits and set it up in the plain of Dura and the province of Babylon. In the province of Babylon. That's why I'm going to go all the way down to Revelation, <laughs> the 19th, the 18th chapter, 17th chapter, rather. You have there the talking of what? Babylon. Babylon the Great. Make sure that's right. Yeah, Babylon the Great, the 17th chapter. Because this is where the Babylon we under now actually started, y'all. Under the Gentiles. It was actually uh, originated with Ham, with Nimrod, but that was under the Hamites. But these are the times of the Gentiles, and this is a Gentile that set up this image in the plains of Dura 
in the province of Babylon. And let's see what this decree was that he said. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together together the princes, the governor, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Now look, they, he called all the silver powers that be, all the civilian powers that were of that day to come. That's why he said the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Go ahead. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, judges the treasurers, the uh, counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now look, all these civilians, all these civil powers that be, had came unto the gathering together, unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and let's see what the command was that went forth. Go ahead. Then a herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded. No, she said, a herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded. Go ahead. O people. O people. Nations. Nations. And languages. And languages. Go ahead. That at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, uh, Psaltry. Psaltry. Dulcimer. Dulcimer and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So he gave the commandment to fall down and bow before this image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Hold this spot. And let's go to Exodus 20th chapter, y'all. Exodus 20th chapter. Hold that spot and we're going to come back. Because this is trying to understand how strong obedience and how people are being obedient to unrighteousness and who's going to be obedient to righteousness. It makes a difference, y'all. Big time. That's why in your flesh dwell is no good thing. Because Adam disobey that's what's in your flesh but if you follow out the one that came and didn't walk in obedience that's in the spirit so right here exodus 20 and verse 1 exodus 20 and verse 1 read and god spake all these words saying i am the lord thy god which i brought thee out of the land of egypt uh-huh out of the house of bondage now look god spake to all these words and said to the children of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That's where our forefathers were. Egypt means the house of bondage. Amen. To Israel. Know that. And the Lord clearly telling you that the land of Egypt represented the house of bondage. That's why we in the a form of Egypt now, but it's called spiritual Egypt. Because we are in bondage in this land. Believe it or not. But we cannot go back to our land talking about we're going to take our land. So now, read. Thou shalt have no other God before the me. The first thing he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. Now he said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. So to my fish and all of that. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Pay attention to that. He said, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Go ahead. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. There's a lot of people that hate the Lord, y'all. That's why he said, that's enough. He said, uh, 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 Father, Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Remember that he's a very jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. But go ahead. Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now look at that. But he said he showed mercy unto thousands of them that do what? Love him and keep his commandments, y'all. 
So now let's go back into the Daniel third chapter and notice in verse six, because Nebuchadnezzar had the command to go for that. When you hear this music from all these six instruments, and he said, ye fall down and ye worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Look at verse 6. Yeah, just like yeah, 3 and 6. But if ye should... 3, three and 6. Oh, and whoso fall not down and worship it, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a, of a burning fury furnace. Now look. Now, can you set up this image which the Lord said, you don't buy down before? Because that's how the Gentiles do. The Gentiles sacrifice it to devils and not to God. So he set this image up and said, Ye shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up, and whoso fall is not down and worship shall the same be cast uh, yeah, in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Go ahead. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, blue heart, sudbunt, uh, sultry, and all kinds of music, all the people that, then all, all the people, the nation, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that never communicated the king had set up. Now, what did they just got to do? That image didn't create them. Just like when Israel came out and they went in the Im into the wilderness, they set up an image talking about, well, we don't know what now is this, Moses. Now, this be the gods that brought us up out of Egypt, obeying unrighteousness. So right here, the people were obeying what? Unrighteousness. Because mm -hmm. this man set up an image and told the people to fall down, and they did, and they wished the golden image. Now watch this now. Let's look at verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Oh, and that, but wait a minute now. Certain people are getting pointed out here. A certain people are getting pointed out, and they said, and they they came and accused the Jews. Of course, they were, because we had the commandments, y'all, and we said we we would obey God. Go ahead. Read. Wherefore, at that time, uh, they spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, "O king, live forever." No, now, you know what? Skip down to verse uh, 12. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image thou hast set up. Now, wait a minute. Why was these three men not bowing down? Because of the commandments of God. They were obeying what? Righteousness. Mm -hmm. But to everybody else, it appeared to be what? Unrighteousness. Because they were obeying what? Unrighteousness. Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach were obeying righteousness. And they said, I'm not going to serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now watch how Nebuchadnezzar reacted. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar. And his rage and fear commanded to bring all oh, that Gentile that got hot. I bet he changed colors, y'all. Turned red hot. And he said, Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring what? Shadrach, go ahead. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Now, look, these men were standing in obedience to God against a man that wanted them to obey, to be disobedient to God. Now let's see how they courage went for. Go ahead. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? No, he said, Is it true? Go ahead. O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my God? No, no, he said, Do not ye serve my God. You got people on set of God for you to serve. Mm -hmm. Whether you serve a true and living God, you got to be careful of that. He said, Do you not serve my God? Go ahead. What, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. He said, do you not worship uh, the golden image which I set up? Asking him a question now. Go ahead. Now if ye be ready that uh, at, now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, food, harp, sackbut, salt, string, and the declaimer, 
and all kinds of music be fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Now look, Nebuchadnezzar had no knowledge of God, y'all. He set up his own God. And he told them, look, if you fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, man, you good. But if you worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that guy? Because he didn't know God. That's how these Gentiles is. They, they said their own thing, y'all. Who is that guy that should deliver you out of my hands? That's how Eric and the Gentiles that got y'all. They're thinking ain't no God going to deliver us out of their, their hands. Right. They got all this technology and all these weapons, all these, they just superpowers and all, all the money. You go and work for their money, not your own. Okay, Israel? But he questioning them, y'all. And then he put their obedience on the line. Now, are they going to cherish their obedience to God? Or are they going to capitulate? Let's see how powerful their obedience is. Go ahead. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered. And said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Look, he said, Look, uh, O king, we ain't gonna be careful to answer you in this matter. That's how they felt about their obedience. It should be that precious where you ain't gonna be careful about your obedience. That's right. And Mr. All this great, all these people come up again, they said, Look, we ain't gonna be careful because they knew their obedience was that precious. Their obedience to God was that precious. Ready to fall it down and say, what's some flesh and blood, man, and see. That's how, you, that's how you need to treat your obedience to God. Be obedient to love, kindness, in the face of overwhelming odds. Right. And that's where they at right now, in overwhelming odds. And they said, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Watch this verse 17. If it be so. No, she said, if it be so. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Look, because of their obedience, they know our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Because they know who they're obedient to, y'all. And your obedience teaches you loyalty, teaches you de uh, devotion. It teaches you submissiveness to the will of God. Uh, uh, it teaches you duty to the will of God, observance of the will of God, and you respect the will of God. Amen. In your life, and he will come through and have you sitting doing the same thing that these Hebrew brothers were saying. Look, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from what? From the burning, from the burning fiery furnace. Yes, sir. He will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. Yes, sir. From the burning fiery furnace. Some of us got the situation that look ugly, y'all. But if you obedience, your obedience is that precious. Okay, how fine that woman look. Okay, how much money is left in anybody will be. You, you can take and nobody know because you obedient to God. God please. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go right through that thing. And that's exactly what they demonstrate right here. In their obedience to God. Because they said, look, he is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us, meaning save, that's what deliver me, save us out of thy hand, O king. Go ahead. But if not, no, but if not, go ahead. Be it known unto thee. It said, look, be it known to you, O king, that, uh -huh. that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image. Which thou hast set up. Now, notice, he, they were bold in their obedience. That's what, that's what kept them. They were, because of their obedience, they were bold in that. And they said, look, that we would not serve thy gods, nor worship thy golden image, which thou hast set up. Now, this is the open, brazen, but in a quiet way. That's how you have to be about your obedience. Look, I ain't going to sit up there and fall through that food. I'm going to be obedient to my God. I'm going to maintain the course because I know he's able to deliver. So they said, but if it's not, look, we ain't falling down to our foolishness because they were obedient and they watched with how that Gentile acted then, y'all. Go ahead. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. All oh, that Gentile gap. <laughs> Woo! He was full of fury then. Go ahead. In the form of his this, this is 
was changed. I bet he changed, turned red, y'all. Red hot. That's why I say, and the form of his visage was changed against what? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh huh. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one, seven, one, one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Oh, uh, he was so mad. He said, Look, man, I want y'all to make that heat excruciatingly hot. Seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Go ahead. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to the bottom. Meshach and Abednego uh -huh. and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen in their hats, and their garments in, in their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look, it was so hot that the men that got cast, that was doing the casting, they died. I said, and these men were bound in their coats and their holes and their hats and their other garments and were cast in the midst of the burning fire. Therefore, because, did we read verse 22? Read verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace is sitting hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now look, that fire was killing the men that was throwing them in there. That's how angry the Gentile got, y'all. Go ahead. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, down into the midst of the burning furnace. Now everybody knew they was done, y'all. Everybody that fell down to bow down to this man, Meshach, and them, they done. They brought it up. Because if it was killing the men that threw them in there, surely they would die. They would die. Look at the eyes. Everybody, if you look at us all corner, man, man, they man, they too. But because of their obedience, Sean, that they cherished, that they held on to, look how God came through, y'all. Read. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. Oh, he was astonished? What? Hey, whoa! Wait a minute. I'm amazed. Astonished. Go ahead. And rose up in haste. And he got this Gentile got up in haste. Go ahead. And spake and said unto his counselor. Now he turns his counselor. Hey, wait a minute, dude. Oh. <clears throat> wait a minute. Go ahead. Did not we cast three men bound in He said, Did not earth? we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Go ahead. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. This, this, hey, yes, yeah, we did, man. The little boy should be burned up in there. They do. It's over. They finished. But were they? Let's see how powerful obedience is. Go ahead. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking oh, in the midst of the fire. Wait a minute. They obedience did this? He said, Lo, I see four men loose. Walking in the midst of the fire? Go ahead. And they have no hurt. Mm. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Wow, look how obedience is, y'all. Look how obedience came through, y'all. They, they, look, they look wiped out. Now you seeing more than what got thrown in there, y'all. Three got thrown in there, and, they, and the Gentiles, they seeing four. And they said the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, you know, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. They spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high God. Oh, wait a minute. You mean that their obedience turned this man to say what? He said, look, he went up to the <clears throat> burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Meshach, <clears throat> sorry, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you service of the Most High God. Think about it. That's what obedience does for you. It will deliver you in the midst of all the opposition, y'all. Hold on to your obedience to God as dear children. Y that's why I said be as obedient children. Because that's what pull you through when the, when the crunch time comes. And it turns this Gentile's heart from making his own God to, hey, me say, <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Benedict, you servants of the Most High God, finish that. 
came forth. Yes, sir. Come hither. Yes, sir. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Look what that obedience did, y'all. This was the anchor. This is what sustained them. This is what gave them power, y'all. This is what ensured their salvation in the midst of overwhelming odds. This is what kept them. This is what had them in observance, in meekness, had them, gave them respect. And look at this Gentile. He is in submission to them. Because he said, ye servants of the most high. Brought some uh, submission of a man that didn't believe in God to believe in God. Right there. That's mm -hmm. how powerful obedience is, y'all. Mm -hmm. People look at your obedience. Man, look, that woman dedicated to her husband. That, woman, that man dedicated to his wife. Man, when you see all them flag girls walk past him, he, he looks like he didn't even see him. Then they be like, man, something about that brother. He light up the room, come in, ain't saying nothing. That's how obedience is. And their faith and allegiance and their loyalty and their willingness to stand fast in their faith, the obedience to the faith. Turn this man around, talking about now you servants of the most high God. That's how serious obedience is, y'all. Go ahead. And the princes, governors, and captains in the king's comfort being gathered together saw these men. Oh, so now all these men, all these civilian civil authorities and captains and king's councils being together, gathered together, saw these men, the servants of the most high God. Go ahead. Upon whose body the fire had no power, mm. nor was the hair of their head shine, mm. neither were their coats changed, mm. nor the smell of the fire had, had passed on them. Look at the power of obedience, y'all. Mm. 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 All glory to the Most High God. That's right. Because of your obedience to the Creator, their obedience to the Creator. This is what happens, y'all. Like I said, I, could, I knew I was in a situation everybody thought I was done. When the wrong kid might be like, oh, what happened? Glory to mine. Because of obedience, y'all. That's what brought these men through. And changed the hearts of his people in so much. Verse 28, read. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, <clears throat> then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach. Oh, now he blessing the God of these men. Mm. Didn't know him. Now he know him by virtue of their what obedience. Because mm -hmm. they tell, look, we ain't careful to ask you in this matter. Our God is able to deliver, and look what's been brought forth, deliverance even to Nebuchadnezzar's mind. Because he said, "Blessed be the God of Shadrach." Go ahead. Meshach, uh huh. Abednego, uh huh. Who has sent his angel? See, that's what was in there, y'all. An angel who has sent his angel. Go ahead. And, and delivered his servants that trusted in him. His servants that did what? Trusted in him. Trusted in him, y'all. That's what obedience does. You trust in God's word. You trust in him. You trust. That's what obedience brings. Brings trust in him. And go ahead. And have changed. Have changed the king's word. Look, your obedience can change people that sit up there thinking you foolish about the word of God. Your obedience can change people's minds. Amen. That's sit up there talking about who is this God. You stay faithful to your obedience, and the same thing will happen to those around you. You will change the king's word like they did. And have yielded, go ahead. And you're the body is that. They might not serve no worship any God except their own God. Therefore, that's I what obedience is. You ain't gonna serve nobody else's God but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. That they will be in accordance, in agreement, duty, and respect, and servility, and submissive. That's what this all means to no other God except their own God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. Go ahead. Therefore, I make a decree. Look at this king. Now he's making another decree. Interesting. That other decree was long. That, that left their mind. Now he's making a new decree. 
Therefore, I make a decree. Go ahead. That every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. Yes, sir. In their houses shall be made up. Dung here, yes, sir. That's an outhouse, y'all. Go ahead. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Oh, now he know God. Because of what, y'all? Obedience. Mm -hmm. You walk in obedience, people that don't know God, you're going to show them God by virtue of your what? Obedience. That's how powerful this thing is, y'all. People that, that, man, you know. Tell them about that guy. I'm going to watch it. And then they're watching you. Look, this king turned around and said, look, you make uh, that every people, nation, and language who speak anything against the God amiss, against the God of, a uh, of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dumb hill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sword. That's how powerful obedience is, y'all. Go ahead. Then the king promoted Shadrach. Meshach. Oh, so they got a promotion out of this thing, huh? Obedience promotes you, y'all. Mm -hmm. People love respect. People love people that are uh, 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 in compliance and reverence and orderliness and in conformity, y'all. They love people that carry out and are compliant, that execute, that live by, that are... Uh, 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 Concur that are devout followers, y'all. Oh God. So the king promoted this guys. The king promoted Shadrach. Go ahead. Shadrach, Meshach, Abdullah, in the province of Babylon. In the province of Babylon. Now think about what we going on. Israel, because of their disobedience, went from a great nation to people hidden away in prison houses, in jail. We run around hollering Black Lives Matter because of what? Disobedience. Now, we just seen an example of three men that stood in the face of certain death, being thrown in a flame fire that was killing the men that was throwing them in there, and they turned around the king's mind. They changed the king's mind from not knowing God to knowing God. That's how powerful obedience is, y'all. That's the flip side of this thing, y'all. That's the flip side of this thing. Now let's go into uh, 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 First Peter four and seventeen. First Peter, I'm sorry, Second Chronicles two and nine. Second Corinthians, sorry, Second Corinthians two and nine. And I'm gonna show you why Paul wrote his epistle, y'all. Why he had to write in the and there's a reason behind it. You don't hear many people talk about this because obedience ain't in front of everybody's mind, y'all. You really? That's why I said, who have believed our report? For they have not all obeyed the gospel. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. Look at what Paul really wrote, y'all. We are almost there. Go ahead. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be whether whether ye be obedient in all things. Oh, so Paul wrote letters to what? That I might know the proof of you, whether you be what? Obedient in all things. That's why Paul wrote these letters to the Gentiles. The proof that obedience. Hmm. That's the reason for these letters, y'all. Now let's go and look at what, uh, 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 uh let me see if I'm gonna go there. Uh, Second Peter, sorry, First Peter, First Peter, one and four, uh, First Peter, fourth chapter, verse 17. We almost there, y'all. First Peter, four and we're going to start at verse uh, 17. Because the Lord want to know, do you have this obedience in you? He looking for that. Okay. Right, first Peter. First Peter 4 and 12. 
God is looking for this obedience. Obedience gets God's attention. Big time. That's why I said this right here. Beloved, think Yeah. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you uh -huh. as through as though some strange thing happened unto you. Because as the newborn baby, the Lord look and see. Are you gonna be obedient to me? Are you gonna be obedient to this precious word? Mm -hmm. That's why I say thinking not. Strange concerning the fiery trial which shall try you. Because the Lord looking for obedience, y'all. As though some strange thing happened unto you, but go ahead. But rejoice in, in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Yes, sir. If ye be, if re if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spray of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. And you got to understand this in your obedience, y'all. Because the Lord said, had to say, because you're going to be reproached for being obedient to God's word. You're going to be reproached for not putting your hand on all these women that's around you. Even though they're right there, flying in front of you, like, look, do I'm faithful to my wife. Yeah, she gorgeous. Yeah, you can woman, you can say, yeah, he's handsome. And they're like, man, how come he ain't? I'm, you know, I'm trying, I'm passing in front of him. So I mean, because you are being obedient. And like it says, you're gonna be reproached for what the name of Christ, happy I ye. Because you're aware of that being you got is precious, y'all. Being obedient to God. Because he said, for the spirit of God, glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, he's evil spoken of. But notice, but on your part, he is glorified. But go ahead. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a greasy body in other men's matters. Look, those are the disobedient, y'all. The ones that want to be what? Murderers and thieves and evildoers. As busy busybodies in other men's matters, then you're disobedient ones, y'all. The Lord said, Look, don't let none of you suffer as that. Because we already read what he's gonna render to them wrath, indignation, and anguish on that. Go ahead. Yeah, if any man suffer as in Christian. Hey, nowadays is that the Bible Christian, y'all. Gotta put a handle on it nowadays. Everybody calls himself a Christian. The adulterous man, I'm a Christian. Really? The idolatrous man, I'm a Christian. Really? Why well, you got so many different denominations? We all Christians, all right? That's why you got to put a handle on it nowadays. But go ahead. Let him not be ashamed. Uh huh. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Uh huh. For the time it come that judgment must begin at the house of God. See, judgment begin at the house of God, y'all. That's what judgment begins. Because the wicked out there obey all righteousness. They don't care. Right. They really don't give a flip flame. But those of us that are obedient unto the truth and unto righteousness, we care. That's why I said for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. It's called the obedience, y'all. Go ahead. And if it what? And, uh, and if it First began at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the God? Look, the gospel of God. Wait a minute, because he said, because, uh, and if it first began at us, that's trying to be obedient to this thing, that's being loyal to this thing, that's being observant and respecting what God says. He said, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? What shall the end be? What shall that end be? Think about that. What shall that end be? Now look, let's go with this last one last place, y'all. I'm gonna go back to this verse, cap this off. Uh first Thessalonians. Sorry, second Thessalonians. Uh first chapter. Mm -hmm. Verse six. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. 
thing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. See, look, God gonna recompense. You be obedient to God. He gonna recompense tribulation to them that what trouble you. Go ahead. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty mighty angels. Uh huh. And flaming fire and taking vengeance on and taking vengeance on them that know not God. Stop. When God come back, when Jesus come back, one minute saying, in flame and fire, he's coming to take a vengeance on them that know not God. And go and what else? And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, so now we understand what the end of them that's gonna be that obey not the gospel. It's gonna be vengeance from God, from Jesus Himself. How are you gonna do this? Go ahead. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction? Yes, sir. From the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimonies, our testimony among you was believed in that day. Yes, sir. He said, Who shall be punished? The ones that know not God and the ones that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that ain't talking about going to heaven, y'all. God's gospel ain't talking about, that's why we say the Lord's prayer, it said, thy kingdom what? Come, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Ain't nobody lying, stealing, killing, being disobedient in heaven. Where's all of that at, y'all? That's down here. He put Israel literally in a figurative speech in hell right here on earth. So what you think the people that are disobedient to the gospel of God got coming? They shall be punished with everlasting destruction for the presence of the Lord because they down here not knowing God and being disobedient for, to the gospel. From his presence, they're going to be ever punished. I said punished. That's what the book said, Reverend. It said they're going to be punished with everlasting destruction for the presence of the Lord and for the power, for the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. What saints are those, y'all? The obedient ones. Amen. And to be a mind in all them that believe, because that testimony among you was believed in that day. I gotta go to this one last verse and this is it. Revelations 14 and 12. Let's see who the saints are, y'all. Revelations 14 and verse 12. Revelation 14 and 12. Definition of the saints, y'all. <clears throat> Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and keep the faith of Jesus. Oh, and have and, and the faith. They, they, uh, <clears throat> here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that do what? Keep the commandments of God and excuse me, the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I hope you got some understanding. Miss part two, obedience and the obedient part two, y'all. So we're going to get ready to close out. Uh, next uh, next Saturday, we should be in uh, broadcasting from Chicago. And uh, also, I'd like to announce, we do have a website, www.thebibleChristiansofgod.com and some great things that happen in the Bible Christian community. We done ran across some brothers and sisters in Kenya. So, yeah, some things are uh, moving. The Lord is moving across the globe with this with the Bible Christian community, y'all. It, it's happening. We're going to be patient and wait on the Lord. It's his program. So, uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and close out here. With Psalms 119 chapter. And we're going to close out with... Uh, uh, Let's do let's uh, 100, uh 113. What Psalms 119 and we're gonna start this time from 113 chapter. Oh, again I want you to remember in this 119 chapter and as a babe, this is a good chapter to study. This son is long, but each block of these will edify you in your understanding 
uh, your God's intent for your life. So, uh, Psalms 119, verse 113. I hate vain thoughts. I hate vain thoughts. thoughts. But thy law do I love. But, but thy law do, do I love. Thou art my hiding place. Thou art my, my hiding, hiding place. place. And my shield. And, and my shield. shield. I hope in thy word. I, I hope in thy word. word. Depart from me. Depart, Depart from me. Ye evildoers. Ye evildoers. For I will keep. But I will keep the commandments of my God. The commandments of my God. Uphold me. Uphold me. According unto thy word. According to thy word. That I may live. That I may live. And let me not. And let me not. Be ashamed. Be ashamed. Of my hope. Of my hope. Hold thou me up. Hold thou me up. And I shall be safe. And I shall be safe. And I will have respect. And I will have respect. Unto thy statutes. Unto thy statutes. Continually. Continually. Thou hast trodden down all of them. Thou hast trodden down all of them. That err from thy statutes. That err from thy statutes. For their deceit is falsehood. For their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked. Thou puttest away all the wicked. Of the earth. Of the earth. Like dross. Like dross. Therefore, therefore, I love thy testimonies. I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth. My flesh trembleth for, for fear of thee. For fear of thee, and I am, and I am afraid of thy judgment. Afraid of thy judgment. Have a Lord, have a reading, enjoy the hearing of the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. The Alpha. The Alpha. The Omega. The Omega. The beginning. The beginning. And the end. And the end. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.